Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Baltimore's cleaning up from the liberal riots. The liberal riots of 2015 are behind us. The city was burned to the ground because of liberal policies, weakness, a stand down order from the mayor, which we broke, by the way, on the show yesterday before Fox News got the news. We had a caller who confirmed uh, that the moronic mayor, the liberal mayor of Baltimore, told the police to do nothing, which is why the city burned. So I don't want to talk about Baltimore. There's nothing I can do about it. What I do want to talk about is gay marriage. And the reason I do want to talk about it is because it's a very big topic, number one. Number two, the Supreme Court is deciding this as we speak. And number three, even the Twisted Sisters at CNN are reporting the following headline. And here is the headline from the Twisted Sisters at at CNN. Supreme Court justice is skeptical of redefining marriage. That's the headline. It's very easy to understand. They're not responding to the <clears throat> pressure groups. They're not responding to guilt. But the uh, the Supreme Court itself were divided, of course, over the constitutionality of gay marriage. And you know you're going to have the libs like uh, though clear, clear, the clear libs, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was never, ever qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Never. The woman was a diehard leftist fanatic, former chief counsel for the ACLU. Never should she have been made. uh, Anyway, you know, she's for it, along with the other liberals, right? But uh, the other side is always going to say no. So there's always the swing voters, right? Justice Anthony Kennedy is the court's pivotal vote, and he seems to be swinging against uh, gay marriage. Chief Justice Roberts, who shocked everyone with his swing vote to uphold Obamacare, remember that? is this time apparently leaning more closely to conservative justices. Now, the arguments for and against gay marriage unfurled inside a packed courtroom Tuesday, with one loudmouth protester even interrupting the arguments from within. Of course, they can't keep their mouths shut. You know, the leftists think that it's their right to interfere with everybody's life. But the question on Tuesday centered around the definition of marriage itself, period. And whether the decision to authorize or ban gay marriage should be left to voters in individual states or decided by the judicial system. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you my opinion right from the front so you don't think I'm sitting on the fence. I am a sexual libertarian. I've said that for many years now. It's a term I defined so you understand where I'm coming from. But with gay marriage, I oppose it completely because I say this and I've said it. I'm very consistent on this. I said I'm a sexual libertarian for years. I said, do as you will, fais ce que voudra, to use a French phrase that I learned from my good friend Rabelais. Do as you will, just leave me alone, number one, and number two, leave the children alone. Don't mess with the children's heads. Children are malleable. Children don't know what they are. They don't know what to think. That's why they're called children. Adults are supposed to teach children how to behave. Take a look at Baltimore. No fathers, no mothers. So it's the same with regard to social mores as it is with moral mores. And I believe that the children should be left alone because this confuses them. So I'm, I'm opposed to a gay marriage for that reason. It's that simple. I didn't say I'm opposed to people being gay. If you're gay, good luck to you. That's what you want to be. Who's going to tell? What, are you going to care what I think anyway? What's the difference what I think? What is the difference what I think if that's what you are doing? What do you care what I think? You, why should you care what I think? You don't care anyway what anyone thinks. We live in a society where everyone does what they want. But now you're demanding that society reaffirm what you want society to reaffirm. While most of society opposes gay marriage, as do all cultures on planet Earth. There is not a religion on Earth that supports gay marriage. You're going to tell me Islam supports it? No. 
You're going to tell me what Buddhism does because you don't understand Buddhism? Buddhism is a, is a traditional religion that opposes gay marriage. Don't tell me about Buddhism or in county. Hinduism opposes gay marriage. Judaism opposes gay marriage. So Christianity? What is Christianity's in favor of gay marriage? Where? There's a case here in San Francisco of an archbishop who has the guts to stand up to the uh, vehement, vehement hatred of Catholics in the city who are doing the bidding of God knows whom by ripping him to shreds. I mean, he's making him into Jesus. And he's 100% right. What he's saying is the Catholic Church opposes gay marriage, and the Catholic Church views marriage as between a man and a woman. End of, end of story. And he's trying to impose some moral values on uh, some of the adherents in the Catholic schools and the Catholic Church. And for that, he's being torn apart. My position is very clear on the Archbishop. Either you're a Catholic or you're not. And if you don't like Catholicism, become an Episcopalian. And if Episcopalianism is too rigid for you, then become a, a Reformed Jew where you can do whatever you want. That's all. You can tell Woody Allen jokes and claim, claim you're religious. So without getting into gay bashing, which I will not permit on this show, I'm not going to go into, you know, I, I just, I, my, some of my best friends are gay. I'm not going to say that. I've had gay friends in my life. I don't currently have any because I have no friends right now. And I, I, mut I discriminate equally against everyone. I have no friends. I live alone, basically. I have a few people I talk to, and it's me and a dog. There was a time I had a very close friend in the family when the children were very young who was gay, who, who I let babysit the children, by the way. I didn't have cameras in the house worrying about it. I used to joke with him. I used to joke. We'd go out and have the, the He was a very nice guy. He would babysit. <laughs> He'd babysit the kids, and I would say, you know, we caught you on the camera. And he would laugh hysterically. I mean, that's the kind of friendship I had. We had an open friendship. That's why I never bothered anybody. So don't think that I'm a homophobe because I'm not. And I'll go back even farther in time if you want me to. When I was young, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, rather, in Queens, New York, one of the group, I, I don't remember his name, became gay or uh, you know, said, decided he had become gay. No one ridiculed him or made fun of him. No one called him a sissy behind his back. In fact, he was so tough he could beat most of us up. He was on the macho side. He's a big, strapping guy who decided that he liked men. So that was it. We all sort of went our own way. I don't know where he... I think he died eventually from something else. Nothing to do with that. But it wasn't an issue. It was what it was. I lived in a big city. People did a lot of things that they wanted to do. So now the country is deciding to redefine marriage. That's what it comes down to. And a lot of gay people, I think, even are against gay marriage, incidentally. You don't know that, but many gays oppose gay marriage almost for the same reasons I do. And I don't understand for the life of me, well, I do understand completely what this is about. This is about redefining society. And uh, that's why this is being heard before the Supreme Court. And I've given you my position. We see the Supreme Court justices are skeptical of redefining marriage. I will have for you in this hour where the 2016 candidates stand. You can pretty much figure out where they are on this. And uh, I'll read you their positions on it. And uh, you'll decide for yourself what you want to think. And uh, we're going to play some of the sound from the Supreme Court. In fact, let's start with John Roberts, the man who shocked the world by backing Obamacare in clip 29. My question is, you're not seeking to join the institution. You're seeking to change what the institution is. The fundamental core of the institution is the opposite sex relationship and you want to introduce into it a same-sex relationship now he is he is the man who gave us Obamacare remember it seems like he's pretty clear on his position and this is him speaking by the way it's not in translation and we have now the female lawyer Mary Bonuato arguing for gay marriage in clip 28 let's hear her position the intimate and committed relationships of same-sex couples just like those of heterosexual couples provide mutual support and are the foundation of family life in our society yet the legal commitment responsibility and protection that is marriage is off limits to gay people as a class the stain of unworthiness that follows on individuals and families contravenes the basic constitutional commitment to equal dignity. Does anyone understand what she said? Uh, completely. Uh, Robert, do you get it? Jim, do you follow it? 
Robert says, yes. I'm not sure I know what she's talking about. No one is saying it's illegal to be gay. So far as I know, no one is arguing against that. And as far as the inheritance and other issues and you know decisions upon a, an individual's death, I think we already have on the books laws in most states about these things, that you don't have to be married. You can assign it to anybody. Isn't that true? I forget what it's called. But there's an, there's an assignation of this that is on the books. You don't really need to be married to have the right to inheritance. You don't have to be married to have the right to uh, determine whether an individual is, uh, let us say, the plug is pulled on them, if you want to make it as vulgar as that. I think I'll go vulgar. Partnership. partnership. What's Domestic partnership, right. Sorry, I didn't know the, the, the jargon for it. I come from another time, not domestic partnership. I'm no, uh, in my day, either you were married or you weren't married. You, there was a thing called common law marriage in my day. Some people lived in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, were commonly more law married. They lived in sh shabby apartments with oil cloth on the floor, and the floor was cockeyed, so when a dog urinated on the floor, the, the urine ran down from the kitchen into the living room. Now, that's all. I, the only people I knew who had domestic partnership were, were like, that, with that, like that. They weren't even gay. I'm, there's a guy who worked for my father. It was Louie and the Monkey. He once met a woman in the bar in Hamelin Corn, and they, had, they shacked up together. But they were, their floors were cro crooked, and they had oil cloth on the floor. And they had a little Boston Terrier. And I swear to God, when the dog relieved himself on the floor, it ran down. You know what apartments cost in that dump now? I can't believe it. Williamsburg's a hot name, but a dump near the, the Trun's meat plant. You could die going over the Kosciuszko Bridge in the summer. You needed, you could almost die going, but they don't have it there anymore. Now it's all clean and everything's fashionable. But let's get back to the gay marriage issue. If you want to sound off on it, 855 400 728 82, I think is my phone number. I've played for you Roberts on it. I played for you the woman arguing for gay marriage. When I come back, we'll have Justice Kennedy, who was the middle of the road. And then we'll have Sam Alito. It's Alito, isn't it? I thought it was Alioto. I, I, I know I'm joking, but I knew the Aliotos here. They're nice people at a good restaurant, too, until Joey died. But uh, Sam Alito on why polygamy shouldn't be legal. He goes from gay marriage to polygamy. And I think it's a topic worthy of our discussion. We'll do all the other news of the day. You can sound off at 855-407-282. Whatever you do, don't suddenly call me a homophobe, homophobe because I oppose gay marriage. They're not the same thing. They're not one and the same thing. Don't categorize me. It's like saying because I oppose welfare, I'm against blacks. Or I oppose welfare, therefore I'm against poor people. It's not the same thing. Do you understand one is not the same as the other? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I should say extremist Muslims are cutting off the heads of gays, burning churches to the ground, killing Christians, galloping across the Middle East, unifying with uh, radical Muslims in Africa and Asia and Middle East, and we're worried about gay marriage. All right, that's America. That's what makes us such a wonderful, free, and open society. And it does differentiate us from those uh, throwbacks. I, I agree with you. And it's the mark of a great society that we can discuss this without shooting each other, by the way. And we do have a place for that. And that place is the Supreme Court, which is ultimately the deciding body that will determine whether or not gay marriage will be uh, legal in 50 states. And I think that, that I don't think Obama has the capacity to, <laughs> to override them. He might try it. God only knows what he could do with a pen if they decide against gay marriage, what he might do. But nevertheless, we have the issue. It's being discussed. And even CNN has this headline, Supreme Court Justice is Skeptical of Redefining Marriage. So we're talking about it. I think the forum called Talk Radio is the perfect place for America to discuss it. And remember, we may not agree during the discussion. We may get angry. But it doesn't mean we have to go away hating each other. As my father's store had a little sign, as I said many times, if we disagree, try to imagine a little sign in front of my head, which says, don't go away, man, just go away. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's start with uh, the next individual who's calling. Her name is Kate. Kate, welcome to the program. Please make your point. Okay. Um, my point is that uh, what do I have to do to earn the right to be married as a gay nope. individual living in the United w States? Why do you want to be married? Uh, for the same reason that I don't want to be classed with, uh, I believe you called it domestic partnership, where my dog pees on the floor and it rolls to the side and I live in a, you know, unstable apartment. I want the Okay, all right, so you're saying that it makes you a second-class citizen if you can't do what everyone else does? No, I'm saying that I want, I want the whole shebang that comes with being married. I want the respectability of it. The but so what you're saying is you want non-gay people to accept your lifestyle no well that's what you just said you want the respectability you have the respectability right now so you want everyone to confirm the respect upon you that you think you're 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 owed i want my children to have a family where they can get medical benefits from both me and my partner i well, want well, let's take it one step at a time you're saying to me that as a domestic in a domestic partnership they can't? Uh, not in my state. Now, what state is that? Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an issue. And the arguments that are being made would would include you're not seeking to join the institution; you're seeking to change what the institution is. How would you react to that? I don't want to change what marriage is. That's the whole point. But you do. Marriage has always been between a man and a woman. I agree with you in that. Um, but if you look further behind what marriage actually means, it's not about, you know, phallic structures and, and women parts. <laughs> like, look, I, I'm listening to you and I'm not laughing at you. I love your arguments. I like your rationality. And I really am hearing you on whether the... Um, the reproductive structure is external or internal is what it comes down to, isn't it? So we'll continue to discuss it. Stay on the line if you wish. You're making a, a good point. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You're seeking to join the institution. You're seeking to change what the institution is. The fundamental core of the institution is the opposite sex relationship, and you want to introduce into it a same-sex relationship. All right, that's Chief Justice John Roberts, who gave us Obamacare. Supreme Court, this is as high as it goes. They're arguing gay marriage, and we're arguing gay marriage. And I have on the line Kate, who is a lesbian, I assume, who is asking, why can't I marry? Kate, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Thank you for having me. So, and Kate, for please, record, please, please, for the record, make your points again because they were well stated. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, my first point was, what do I have to do to earn the right to get married? And another question I had was, um, can you think of any other rights that have to be earned by individuals in the United States? Because this is the first I've ever heard. I mean, I don't understand it. And, um, well, but you're saying that, see, it's not exactly an equal argument that you're making. You're saying a right that you're being denied. I, I don't accept that. Our, I mean, you're trying to redefine the right. You're not trying to jo and join the right. You're trying to redefine the right. I mean, it's not as clear cut as you say. And that's why there's confusion out there. It, it, let's say, let's take the straight community versus the gay community. In the, in the straight community, you're actually trying to redefine what the word marriage means to us, to be very clear. Uh, well, maybe it needs to be redefined. Okay, uh, so, you admit, so you admit you're trying to redefine marriage. I guess maybe the criteria that makes up what equals marriage. I mean, if it's just the fact of two opposite genders being in a relationship together... I mean, I know some people that are opposite gendered and in a marriage, and it's pretty terrible. Oh, we all do. Oh, we all do. We all do. And by the way, speaking of children, it's all over the map. I mean, I, I've seen gay couples raise children beautifully, and I've seen straight couples make a disaster of raising children. So it's not as clear cut as if you're straight, you do better. I get that as well. Believe me, I'm a realist.
I and think you know I'm a realist, Kate. Or I don't think you'd be listening to the show. Am I right? Sir? What is, this the, is this the first time you've heard the radio show you're listening to? No, not you. I love your show. <laughs> All right. So, okay, but the reason you love my show is because I'm a realist. Isn't that correct? Yes, and you tell the truth, and I like that. I mean, well, I'm, I'm trying to arrive at the truth with you without flip-flopping on the issue of gay marriage and without offending you, to be honest with you. I don't want to offend you. You can't offend me on this. I mean, Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you, that's why I had you back again, because now we go to the issue of dignity, right? Right. Isn't, isn't that another issue that, that gay people are always talking about? Definitely. And I believe that all people deserve that right of, of dignity. I, I do. Whether it's, I mean, the truth is, I can't say that every gay couple in the world should be married, and I can't say that every heterosexual couple that I've ever met should be married. But I think that if, if we want to build a country that has these ideals of honesty, truth, dignity, and all these wonderful things that we want people to be, then why would we deny a couple that wanted to try to, to attain that in a stable relationship with children, um, you know, and like I said, like the whole shebang of being in a, um, I guess you'd say, a vow. Let, let, let's, let's take the children. Let's talk about the children because that's where I begin and end with this, this issue, right? I have defined myself, Michael Savage, as a sexual libertarian. I quote Rabelais, do as you will, as long as you don't harm the children. And I believe that gay marriage confuses children. And, and the reason I say that is, let's take a kid four or five years old. Don't you think that they would be better off with a male role model if they're a boy and a, 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 and a female role model as a mother and a, and a male role model as a father than two women or two men? Who's to say that the male role model in my life growing up was my own father? I mean, there are grandfathers, there are uncles, there are, you know, wonderful friends of the family. It doesn't mean just because our children would have two moms that they wouldn't have wonderful male role models or vice versa with gay men and getting married. You know, there it takes a village to raise a child. We've heard that. Well, that was Hillary Clinton's famous statement. I actually think it takes a man and a woman, not a village. I've never known a village to help me raise my children when I needed the help. I'll tell you the truth. Well, you might need some better friends then. <laughs> well, they're older now. They have their own children, so I'm past that problem. Right. But the thing, the thing is you're making very valid points. There's no anger or hatred from you or me on this. And I don't think we're going to agree on it. My, my position is still the same. Society is melting down on so many levels, Kate. And I'm going to jump to a different issue, but it's not, it's not direct, directly related at all. I read of a couple the other day that decided... They were going to let a four-year-old child of theirs transition sex in gender. I don't know whether it was a boy becoming a girl or vice versa. Now, how in the world can we accept that that's a valid decision? I don't know. Uh, I would have to have been in that, in my heart in that, to be able to judge it one way or but another. But how can a four-year-old know whether he's a boy or a girl? I've known since I was very little that I was not like my other friends that I knew of. It is something that you just know. And unless you are gay, you may never be able to understand it. But it doesn't mean that I was hurtful to anybody else. You know, it was hurtful to me to not understand the emotions I had inside. And I do believe that it can be. Well, sad. let's say this. Let's, let's look at society as a whole. And you have to weigh every decision, pro and con, as benefits or harm to a society as a whole. What percent of the population is gay? The last estimate I met is about, read is about 1%. Ew. So you want to redefine marriage for the 99 other percent to satisfy the needs of 1% is what you're saying. Now, I know the opposite argument. You'll say, uh, you know, segregation was a small percentage of population, yet it was unfair to them. I get that. I understand where the arguments come from and how they go back and forth on this. Uh, I, I'm not going to change your mind on it. I don't think you're going to change mine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that children are confused by gay marriage. I'm convinced that children, when they see a man and a man up in, in, in front of an altar with an organ going, uh, getting married, the kids really are confused by it. Well, studies have proven that children that are raised 
from being little in relationships that are same sex uh, are very well adjusted. I know that as they get older, if it's something, you know, we're always scared of something that's different. But if the United States would just embrace this, if they could come to some terms of tolerance about it and acceptance, I don't think we would have the same issues that we're facing right now with them struggling against the pain of change. Well, how about having a homosexual Boy Scout leader? Don't you think that confuses boys? Um... I don't know. Homosexual doesn't mean pedophilia, you know. It, it, no, I, I'm, I'm not. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But what do you? What are we trying to teach our children? What do we want them to be? A homosexual man has just as much masculinity as a heterosexual man. So not in there. Certainly not. That's not true. It can be true. It certainly can be true. But it, it can also not be true. And the proof of my st- the proof of my statement is that in many. Male homosexual marriages, one is calling himself the wife now, which I find to be astounding. I, I myself am confused by it. I turn the TV on and, and you see Hollywood, two normal looking men and one says, this is my wife, Barry. I don't understand that, truthfully. Can't he just say it's my gay partner? Why is he his How does a guy become a wife? I don't believe they're all that way. And those No, but, but listen to what I'm saying. Listen, this is very important and it's germane to our discussion, notice. I'm not saying our argument. A man says, here's my wife, J- Jeff. I don't understand it. Can't he just say it's my partner, Jeff? Isn't he redefining what the word wife means by saying his boyfriend is his wife? Well, it depends on what his criteria of what a wife is. You know, well, his we, wife. Well, we know what that means. It means that he's saying that he is the man in the relationship and Jeff is the girl, is the woman, right? I guess. That's that's the whole part of this, that we are all part masculine, part feminine. No matter, you know, we all have that genetic makeup inside of ourselves. Oh, I know about XY and XXY. Believe me, I'm a biologist. And I do understand uh, this very well. So don't think that I'm one of these stuck-in-the-mud you know, kind of right-wing conservative types who don't understand the subtlety of what you're saying. I truly do. I truly do. However, we're looking at at, at society as a whole, Kate, and the the pluses and the minuses, uh, the benefits and the risks on our children, I think that's what the discussion is about. I think that education about it all would be helpful. I think that if we didn't treat it like um, a disease, it would be helpful. <laughs> That's interesting. That's very funny. You well, know. all right. Look, I think you are an extremely fine uh, uh, proponent of, of uh, same-sex marriage in the way you present it. There's no militancy. There's no anger. There's no rejection. There's no hate, hate, hatefulness, which unfortunately most of us straights seem to get from the gay community whenever, whenever we say we oppose same-sex marriage. We're attacked for it. I don't believe that that should be the response because I would be doing the same thing to you that I perceived would be happening to me, and that's not what I want. I want love and tolerance, and I want to attain that level with my partner. So your position is that the people who oppose gay marriage are ignorant because they don't understand it. Is that basically it? Um, As long as we're absolutely defining ignorant as having not experienced the totality of what it would mean yet, then yes. Um, No name calling in it. I really do believe that education about this and tolerance could bring us a long way. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another argument that I would present, which is that marriage per se between men and women is in such trouble right now. What is it, 50% of all marriages end in divorce rather rapidly? I think so. Doesn't this further weaken the institution of marriage itself? It doesn't strengthen it. How does it strengthen it? It doesn't. But commitment is is commitment, and not everybody um, can follow through with that. I, I'm not throwing stones at people that make the decision. Well, that's very interesting what you just said. That's actually fascinating. Uh, you seem to be arguing that gay people who want to be married are doing so because they want to make a commitment to the other partner. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> and that without marriage, they're not committed to it. It's sort of like an open marriage amongst heteros where there's no real commitment. It's just live together and whatever happens, happens. 
No, I, I mean, I was in tears watching uh, whenever they first began the actual gay marriages here in the United States to see the partners that had been together for 30 years, 40 years, that had waited for their moment to be able to have it validated on paper. Um, loving commitment doesn't take marriage. It doesn't take marriage. It doesn't take that piece of paper. But it sure would be nice to be able to live somewhere that was loving and tolerant enough. Yeah. Okay, I think I think that this whole argument can be boiled down to to uh, acceptance and tolerance, which is what you're arguing for. And you're saying gay people want straight people to tolerate uh, them, which, by the way, in America is pretty much the norm today, except in certain quarters. Uh, but you now want the straight people to uh, to validate it, and many people don't want to validate same-sex marriage for religious reasons. Right. And, and religious reasons have been used for, oh, goodness, so many hurtful things in the world. I mean, they're happening all over the world. This gay marriage stuff is, is a very powerful thing happening, pertinent to me in my life, but it is not the only thing happening in the world, and I realize that, too. It's one of the tiny little specks of what's going on around us. Let me ask you this last question, because I've enjoyed this thus far. I mean, you're a person I'd like to sit and talk with at length on this issue. Let us say that the justices rule in favor of gay marriage. What would be the next mandate of the gay community? What do they want next? I have no idea. Rainbows for everybody, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't tell me you're a, you're a children's book illustrator. No, I'm not. No, I am not. Um, well, I'm you're a very nice person. You're a very sweet person. Are you yourself with a woman, I mean, for a long time? Uh, we've been together four years. Actually, we went... To, uh, Florida and got legally married there in order for her to be able to be a part of my um, insurance through my company that I work for. Well, you mean she couldn't be part of it in your state even through a domestic partnership? Is that it? That's correct. Interesting. That's a big question. Inheritance, insurance, last rights, things like that. Very big, big issue. But here's the big problem. By saying that we accept domestic partnerships, people have abused that, as you well know, by altering who their partner is on a regular basis and bringing them into the benefits of the corporation. You know that as well, don't you? Yes. Yeah. You know, they say, Bobby is my domestic partner. The company pays for Bobby's health insurance. The next year he finds another, his, uh, Sammy is my domestic partner. Now the company has to pay for Sammy's health insurance. The next year, it's Billy. And this has been a problem. And I don't All right, Kate, Kate, I tell you the truth. I've enjoyed speaking with you. you. You have made such good points. You may have swayed a lot of people one way or the other. But I still stick to what I believe, which is that the children are better off with marriage as it is. I think it confuses them. Would you accept a copy of my forthcoming novel uh, from me if I said I would send it to you, or is that off limits? Oh, absolutely. I would love it. Well, you're getting a free... I mean, it, it's nothing about gays in it. There's not one word about gays. It's all about Islamo terrorists who want to destroy the world, <laughs> gays included. And it's called Countdown to Mecca, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, I, I got to look back on that last call. I would say it was one of the high, high moments in my radio career after 21 years in radio. And if more of the gay community acted like Kate did in presenting arguments, instead of forcing and screaming and yelling and demanding at everybody, I don't think we'd be here today, to be very honest with you. The more you scream at people and tell them do something, they don't want to do it. Kate was wonderful. I just got this email. I don't have the time. I have so much good stuff. Someone I respect greatly says it's all financial. They want perks that are restricted to hetero unions legally to apply to same sex, they are correct. It's from someone I respect. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language. 
Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. In the United States of America, that's a universally accepted piece of music, correct? Everyone hears it. They know it means here comes the bride. They envision a woman in a white wedding dress and a man in a tuxedo walking up the aisle to a religious persona, personality, who will betroth them, the rings will be exchanged, and it, cultures have different different symbols, the Jews break a glass, this one does that, whatever. But it's usually well understood through millennia by all religions to mean a man and a woman. Well, not in America. Just as everything else is going through a social upheaval, probably because of the gay issue, by the way, uh, the Supreme Court is now taking up a very important question about which, dire which direction the society will take for the future. And they're deciding whether or not to accept gay marriage and make it a national, uh, a federal issue, by the way, and make all states accept gay unions as the same as opposite sex relationships. And we've, we've come so far in this country that we had to redefine a man and a woman as an opposite sex relationship. Think about that. Think about redefining marriage to the extent that now if you're a man and a woman who are married, you have to say we're an opposite sex couple. Who would have ever thought of it, even saying a thing like that? Why do you have to redefine an institution as fundamental and as shaky as marriage, which needs its on life support to begin with? Why now would you want to change that? Well, there are reasons why. Gay people say that they're equal to everyone else, which of course by definition they are. People are people, aren't they? <laughs> It doesn't matter what your race is. So they're saying it shouldn't matter what your sexual orientation is. We're entitled to the same exact dignity and benefits. You can't argue with that, or can you? No, you can't argue with it on one level, but on the other level, you have to ask yourself, why must we have it 100% one way or 100% the other? I would say that we could be opposed to homosexual marriage or gay marriage, however you want to put it, or same-sex marriage, if you want to be real PC about, about it while giving uh, same-sex couples all of the same benefits as, as uh, so-called opposite-sex couples. All the benefits would apply. That's what I think needs to be done in order to have equality without throwing the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. In other words, you can still maintain the dignity of the institution of marriage, and you can still respect it as being between a man and a woman, and you can still not discriminate against gay people by giving them the very same financial benefits. And then everybody wins, isn't that true? But that would not satisfy those pushing the issue. And I will play for you some of the sound bites to indicate that the way the Supreme Court is tilting is against redefining marriage, by the way. We played John Roberts, the man who gave us Obamacare. Let's play 29 again. My question is, you're not seeking to join the institution. You're seeking to change what the institution is. The fundamental core of the institution is the opposite sex relationship, and you want to introduce into it a same-sex relationship. Now, that's Roberts, who was quite liberal on Obamacare. Remember, he shocked the world, and he gave us Obamacare. Now we'll go to the man in whose hands the whole thing is going to fall, and that would be J Justice Anthony Kennedy, who was always the swing voter. Let's hear what he has to say in clip 30. When you think about these cases, you think about words or cases, and, and the word that keeps coming back to me in this case is, is millennia plus time. This definition has been with us for millennia, and it, it, it's very difficult for the court to say, oh, well, we, 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 we know better. Okay, well, there you hear it. And we're going to play the lawyer arguing for gay marriage. I should do it right now. Mary Bonato, let's play her right now. The intimate and committed relationships of same-sex couples, just like those of heterosexual couples, provide mutual support and are the foundation of family life in our society. Yet the legal commitment 
responsibility and protection that is marriage is off limits to gay people as a class. The stain of unworthiness that follows on individuals and families contravenes the basic constitutional commitment to equal dignity. Well, we'll hear another opinion in a, in a moment. Um, I have strong feelings on this issue for a number of reasons, and I'll put it in a paralogical sense. I'm going to put it somewhere else because it's not straight up. How many gay people have not had children as a result of coming out of the closet and being gay? Millions, isn't that correct? Some of our most talented, wonderful, intelligent people, because of the openness of of modern American society going back now 40 years, have opted out of being hidden or closeted in the old days if a person was gay or felt uh, an attraction to the same sex. They probably would have gotten married to hide it, and they probably would have had a family producing children. But because of this let it all hang out, if you feel gay, act gay. If it feels good, do it. Uh, they've opted not to have children. And as a result, number one, society has lost millions of remarkable children. That's one point that is almost irrefutable. And I have felt this for, for years. I've thought about this. Why is society devolving so rapidly? One of the reasons is some of our most talented, intelligent people have not had children. That's one point. And then there's another point I want to make, and this is more important, actually, because maybe the first point could be argued in some way or another. I kept asking myself, why are gay people liberal? Why are, they all, why are most of them so liberal? Why is society unraveling on so many other levels, putting aside the issue of, of sexuality? And one of the reasons is, is because some of our most intelligent, emotional uh, people, meaning passionate, I meant to say, rather than emotional, some of our most emotional, passionate people happen to be gay. And while in the past they would have taken on other causes that are so critical for the betterment of society, they have been single focused only on gay issues. And as a result, as a result, society has again devolved because the gay movement has sucked so many people into a single issue. They've ignored all the other important issues of our society, which is why we're collapsing. Why would a gay person want open borders? Why would a gay person want unlimited welfare? Why would a gay person want to be tolerant for Islamists coming into America? Because they're not focused on any of it. Their community has focused them only on one issue. And as a result, the entire society has, has, has lost out. So these are some other uh, uh, reasons that I can give you that have nothing to do directly, nothing related directly to this issue, but it has something to do with what I'm saying in a way. And therefore, I would say to you that the protections of a, tradi a traditional society has offered us protections, both obvious and not so obvious, that we may not be aware of. And that openness is not necessarily for the betterment of the people or for society. I don't think you've heard that before. So what am I arguing for? I mean, let, let you figure it out. I'll let you think about it. But I want to go to some of the callers. And, and get some of the opinions of America on the savage nation on, a, on an issue I think far more interesting to me than Baltimore. We know why Baltimore happened. It happened because of incompetent liberal leadership. It happened because the mayor gave a stand-down order, which was a story I broke on this show yesterday before Fox News when a member of the state legislator called and told us that she told the police to stand down. We know what happened. It's that simple. So why talk about it anymore? I'm not going to talk about Baltimore. I want to talk about this because this is a defining moment in American history, by the way. Robert on WABC, tell us your opinion on gay marriage. You are, uh, are a psychiatrist, correct? Yes, sir. I've been a child and adolescent psychiatrist for 30 years. I treat just children and teenagers. So Please tell us your opinion on gay marriage. Um, well, I was more speaking about the effects on the children. I, I, I just wanted to make a comment. That earlier call was one of the most excellent calls I've heard on your show in a long time. It was an excellent discussion. Wasn't she, uh, Kate, the gay woman from Louisiana? The woman yeah. was some... Wow, she was wonderful. An excellent discussion between two very intelligent people, and I really appreciate that, and that's why I listen to your show. So I well, You know what? A, that's a compliment, and it's B, what I live for. So now, as a psychiatrist, I don't know which position you're going to take, by the way, but I'd like to hear your opinion. Well, my, my, it's more, it's more, for me, it's more about what, what the effects it has on the children. Um, and, and again, I, 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 I'm in my own personal belief system, I, am, I have no problem with gay marriage. 
but more speaking to and, you, and I understand you wanted to protect the children. That's what I've done for my life. That's what I dedicate my life to. And I do not think, and I don't see the confusion that you've spoken about. I do treat quite a few children who have um, both gay parents and married gay parents. And, and the statistics also bear it out that there's no more increase in confusion, gender confusion, life confusion, morals confusion among children of gay parents and married gay parents versus straight parents. I think but let me say this, Robert. You're, you're a psychiatrist, so you're a man of science. You practice in Manhattan or New York City, correct? I practice, I, I practice outside of Manhattan, yes. But you practice in a rather liberal community. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I, as an epidemiologist, would say that the sample that you are using for your, for your decisions is a rather limited or skewed sample. It, it might be. I also do, I, I like to, I believe as being a person of science, that I should keep up with what's being published and being written in science. So I do read the journals, I subscribe to them all, and I read them religiously. And the studies that are coming out are showing the same thing that I'm seeing. I would agree. I live in a liberal community, um, probably 20 minutes from my house, the Clintons live, who I would not vote for, by the way, but 20 minutes from my house, the Clintons live. So, all right. so I, you, live in, you live in Westchester, which is a very uh, uh, affluent liberal area, and you're drawing your conclusions based on that, but now I think you're going to widen your statement by saying the literature also supports that, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but, I, I, but Robert, come on, let's be clear. You know and I know that peer-reviewed literature is fundamentally flawed as well. They're going to select articles which support the position of the, of the editor of the journal. And, you know, science today is not what science was when you went to medical school. Fortunately, you are right on that, too. It is very skewed. Half the medicines that they actually say that work don't work because the drug companies are paying for the, the study. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you and I would argue on too many things. You want a lot of things. I would just point out that I, I do not see it as being a problem for the children that I have worked with. That's fair I, enough. And by the way, you have a wider, you have a wider opinion than I do in, in the sense that I don't work with children. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll tell you, my bias is actually bigger than yours. I, I really think it's more... If you're good parents, that's the issue. And if you treat your children well and you bring them up to be polite, you bring them up to um, respect their adults, respect their elders, you, you bring them up with traditional values, the fact of it being two females or two males really does not affect the children. It's the quality and the personality of the parents that is far more important. And that's my view. And, I'm gonna, I'm and, by the way, and I agree with you a thousand percent. But that's not the issue. The issue is redefining what the word marriage means, and that's all the Supreme Court justices are focused on, which is the redefinition of the word marriage. That's my own personal belief, that I think that that's okay. I'm more speaking to how I see it affecting the children, and I don't think it's an issue. I think if you're a good parent, that's more of the issue than being gay or straight. I think you're right, by the way, because we've all seen horrendous hetero parents I mean, it's not all one way or the other. We've seen horrendous gay parents as well. But we've also seen the case where children are raised by gay people who wouldn't have been raised by anybody if it wasn't for them. I mean, that's the truth of today as well. So this is not a clear-cut, open-and-shut case, is it? That's why we're discussing it. That's why America is arguing over it, Robert. Yeah, isn't that true? It's going to redefine our society in a lot of ways, and I think it's far more important than, you know, round-the-clock Baltimore on CNN, which is driving me insane, so I'm glad you're talking about this. I well, yeah, I was going to ask you, you're a busy psychiatrist, yet you have time to call the Savage Nation quite an honor. I've been wanting to for a while. <laughs> it's my first time. Actually, I was... how, 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 much do, how much do I owe you for the time you've spent speaking with me? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> the then, then I'll send you a bill. <laughs> His no, because we can't look we can't talk about Baltimore the only reason the news is running it is because there's things on fire and then they can show it but talk radio is about ideas it's not so much about images that's the difference between talk radio and television they can't beat us on ideas because they don't have ideas all they have is images yeah, I spend much more time listening to talk radio than I do watching television because of the well I'm thrilled that people of education who may disagree with me on gay marriage or other issues, still find it worth their time. I really am, and I'm going to send you a, a gift, just as I sent Kate. It'll come in a plain brown wrapper so it doesn't shock any of your uh, liberal uh, patients. It'll be my, my new novel called Countdown to Mecca, which I think you're going to find you will agree with, <laughs> by the way. Quite well. 
I will read it. And that, Doctor, I, thank you very much for calling the Savage Nation. It's uh, 20 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. That's what we're talking about. And the Supreme Court is talking about it. Their decision is going to have long-lasting effects. And I, I will tell you that the conversation I had with the um, lesbian woman, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can use the word, but lesbian, I don't know if that's even appropriate anymore, but from Louisiana was a great, I mean, this is a high point in my radio show in the way it evolved, the conversation. And we're going to MP3 it and put it on michaelsavage.com so you can re-listen to it and share it with people. Because I am so sick and tired of being typecast. I am sick and tired of being turned into what I'm not by the haters that I want to put that up on my website. It's that simple. I mean, you can disagree with me, but I'm not who you say I am. Believe me. Here's an email I just got on it from a listener. And when I said, what is your position on gay marriage? I, this came through the producers. And this writer says, I think it's unnatural. And everyone knows it is in some level, on some level. But I think the government should get the heck out of marriage and we should have a flat tax to make everything simple then marriage will be according to your church as it should be, and there will be no reason for anyone to argue about it anymore. Other rights like hospital visitation and whatnot can be handled with power of attorney and other legal documents. That's, I think that's pretty much a rational liberal position, incidentally, and probably a rational conservative position as well. And I don't think you have to go one way or the other. I have gay people on the, on the line who want to talk about it. We'll get them. We'll have people who are vehemently opposed to gay marriage. For religious reasons, we'll get to them. And we'll get to you eventually on the Savage Nation. I don't have any open lines. I took a chance saying I'm not doing Baltimore. I'm not doing the news of the day. I'm going to do this because this it's been around a long time, this argument. And their decision is going to come down. And when it does, you're going to see the, the effects it has on our society. They're going to be long-lasting. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Okay, so there it is. You picture the woman in the white dress, the man in the tuxedo. They walk down the aisle. It's something that all parents look forward to for their children. And you know how many people have said that they were denied that when a child died or was killed. They denied the graduation. They were denied the marriage. It's a uh, transition. It's a uh, a fundamental element of American life, and now we're being asked to redefine what marriage is. We have been asked, actually, we've been told to redefine it, not been asked. We've been demand demanded that we redefine it by the radicals in the gay community, and now, of course, they have their day in court where it really matters, which is the, the Supreme Court, and we'll soon find out which way it goes. According to even CNN, the Supremes are tilting against. Redefining marriage, and I want to play for you uh, the the conservative on the court, one of the conservatives, Sam Alito, where he then changes the argument to the issue of polygamy. He says basically that if we approve of if we redefine marriage to being between two men or two women, then what's to stop people from polygamy? Listen to clip thirty one. Well, what if there's no? These are four people, two men and two women. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, uh, the sort of polygamous relationship, polygamous marriages that existed in other societies and still exist in some societies today. And let's say they're all, they're all consenting adults, highly educated. They're all lawyers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would be the ground under, under the logic of the decision you would like us to hand down in this case? What would be the logic of denying them the same right? The lot, number one, I assume the states would rush in and say that when you're talking about multiple people joining into a relationship, that that is not the same thing that we've had in marriage, which is on the mutual support and consent of two people. Setting that aside, even assuming it is within no, the fundamental right. Well, I, I don't know what kind of a distinction that is, because a, a marriage between two people of the same sex is not something that we have had before. Okay, well, we know where, he, he, you know, we know where he's coming from, so to speak. So this is a fascinating topic, and I'm very lucky that we can present it today. 
because it's going to be ongoing for a little while. Where do the candidates stand on gay marriage? Senator, Texas, Senator Ted Cruz, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage opposed. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Yes. Position on gay marriage opposed. I'm going to go down the list. I did this work for you because it's an important piece of work. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who's my pick thus far, would he attend the same-sex wedding? He has been to a reception. Position on gay marriage opposed. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage opposed, but open to granting legal rights for same-sex couples. That's the libertarian approach, which I agree with, by the way. And he said you probably could have both, which is the traditional definition of marriage, and the issue of gay marriage should be left up to the states. But he said then you could also have the neutrality of the law that allows people to have contracts with another. Very clear. Mike Huckabee. I don't know. He's not going to, whatever. Uh, I, I don't even want to read Huckabee. He's not a serious contender. I mean, he's got some. Jeb Bush, former governor, would he attend a same-sex wedding unclear position on gay marriage opposed? New, Go New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, would he attend the same-sex wedding unclear? Position on gay marriage opposed. Ben Carson, a, a brilliant man, a wonderful man, a, neuro, a pediatric neurosurgeon, and he got there not by affirmative action but by brains. You cannot uh, fake being a pediatric neurosurgeon. You can't advance someone in pediatric neurosurgery who's not, who's not competent. It's uh, not like sociology or, 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 or gender studies. Ben Carson, retired neurosurgeon, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage, opposed to changing definition of marriage, but open to granting legal rights to same-sex couples. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Rick Perry, former Texas governor. Would he attend the same-sex wedding? Probably. Position on gay marriage, opposed, but it's a secondary or tertiary issue. That's interesting. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. I don't know where this creep came from. Bernie Sanders has always been like an anomaly. The guy is from Brooklyn, heavy Brooklyn accent. He, he finagles the Vermonters into being a, a senator, declares himself an open socialist. Now suddenly he's running for the presidency. He has less of a chance than my dog Teddy does. But nevertheless, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Yes. Position on gay marriage supports. All socialists support uh, gay marriage, by the way. All of them. Hillary Clinton, do I have to tell you what her position is? I mean, is, is that a necessity for me to tell you what her... So we know where the battle lines are drawn. And um, we'll take some more callers on this. WFNC Radio. Steve, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your position? Well, um, thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, I'm gay, and uh, I oppose gay marriage uh, because it just it doesn't make sense uh, from an economical standpoint. Uh, it doesn't make sense from a romantic standpoint. Um, I don't understand how a certificate comes into play when you're talking about a commitment between two people. Um, I am in a relationship, and it, we, we never talked about having a ceremony or anything like that, but we're happy. Um, and if things did, uh, and, and I think people need to think about this, um, from my community need to think about this. Right now, we don't have to go to court. We don't have to deal with property issues. If we want to separate, we split our property, and we go our separate ways. Um, that is a libertarian um, uh, environment, you know. That's and we're we're dealing with now when it comes to like healthcare, uh, marijuana. Um, there seems to be like this desire by uh, the courts and the government to codify everything. And we are the last community that has the freedom to live as we want to without having to file uh, some sort of paperwork in the courthouse. So you're actually saying that marriage would somehow give you less freedom as a gay man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the commitment is there. Now, when, if, if a commitment is... A commitment has to be voluntary because you can have a certificate and, and, and kind of renege on that, um, on that commitment. You know what I mean? Like, you, straight people cheat on each other. Uh, gay people cheat on each other. Um, what's the certificate? You know, well, that means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, now, and, and just like the last point... The last point I want to make about this is I don't like being judged, and I'm sure that the people in my community don't like being judged. So let's stop putting these lawsuits in the system and asking America, okay, to go to the polls, to 
to and make a judgment on our lifestyle. We don't need. Look, I, I'm an, uh, look. You got to understand something, Steve. I'm much older than most people, probably in the radio business, and I grew up in a different time. So my views are not that of today, and I, I have to admit that. I'm not going to pretend that I that I'm 39 years old. I'm not. But the few men that I knew who were gay when we grew up became gay because not only were they attracted to men, but they wanted rampant, unlimited sex at all times with whoever they wanted it. And the last thing they wanted was to be wrapped up into a marriage like their parents. They didn't want to be restricted into such a boring, uh, traditional life, by the way. I never understood where the gay marriage thing came from to begin with. But then you're telling me that this is becoming somewhat of a norm today where so many gays are not in it just for the wild, crazy, rampant, uh, let us say, sex with anyone kind of thing, but they're actually in it to find someone to live with. Isn't that what you just said? Yes, and I think you need to talk to a psychologist about repression and all that. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be a neurosurgeon or a psychologist or anything like that, um, and I don't know uh, everybody in, in the community, but um, at that time, it seems to be where you, you had to, you, you were repressed, and you were looking for that opportunity to fulfill that, you know what I mean, that desire. Now we don't have that. With the normalization, with, with the ability of people to go out and live as they want to, they're calmer. So they aren't hyperactive, you know what I mean? Um, when I go out with my partner, uh, we sit side by side when we're at a booth eating dinner. Um, we're not big on the PDA thing. I don't like holding hands in public. I think it's weird. Um, but we Well, hold on. That's very interesting. It's, it's funny you should mention that. In San Francisco, it's, it's rather a norm, but you still have some of the people from out of town who move here, and they feel it's their obligation to kiss in front of a straight couple or in front of children. They, they do it just for shock value, which I find to be very pedestrian, by the way, and you know, like I, so out of town, it's unbelievable. I mean, most straight people don't find it necessary to kiss in front of uh, strangers. Well, it's because it comes natural. Now, you're talking about people, everybody at one point in their life kind of dealt with... Um, well, I, I'll, I'll speak from my perspective. I've dealt with, you know, the should I live this way kind of phase, um, and I, I came to terms with it, and I'm comfortable with it, but I still don't feel comfortable putting it out there in front of people that don't feel comfortable with it because I'm kind of sensitive to how I, how I am with other people. And a lot of, there's a lot of gay people that are like that, too. A lot of gay people don't want to be judged. They want to live their own lives. They want to be left alone. Um, so the, the idea that um, a lot of the gay people, when you see uh, 30 elephants, okay, you can see 30 elephants, and if one's white, you're going to notice a white elephant. You know what I mean? I, I don't, if you can understand the analogy. No, I, I follow <laughs> what you're saying, but to gay people today are almost invisible. By the way, not like in my day where people took on extreme roles to express their particular sexual orientation. I mean, you see guys who look like regular guys. They look like guys. How do you know they're gay? How does anyone know anymore? I don't know. I mean, it's just it's it's, it's all in the social networking thing. I can't I can't speak for that. But I just my my point about it all is is that you know people just want to be left alone, and um, I I don't understand why people would behave that way. I don't see a lot of it. Um, I mean, I've been to pride parades, and you see a lot of crazy stuff go down, and that's embarrassing in itself. Not for me, but for the people that are doing it. I don't attach myself to that. Well, you see, now that's an interesting statement unto itself, and I don't want to over-politicize the side show here, but in San Francisco you have a crazy element here of a leather parade where people march, they whip each other in public, they do the most horrendous things you can imagine to each other in public, and Nancy Pelosi says it's perfectly fine, it's part of her value system as a Catholic. That's crazy. How could you whip somebody in public and call that a normal value? That's the, that part of the country. Now, if you come to the South, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in Raleigh, and in these areas here, people are much more tame. Um, they're much more relaxed. And while they're not afraid to make themselves known, you know what I mean, by attending these events, they're not going to do that stuff like they do in San Francisco. I've been to San Francisco. I've been to Seattle. Um, there's a lot of bad stuff out there in general. Um, you're talking about, like, drug addiction, um, like the skeezy hippies up there in Seattle that, you know, started that riot on Martin Luther King Day, you know, that kind of stuff. That's just how those people are. Well, some of those people are out there. So it, it, it's very... But you're saying them. it's not related to the gay community directly. It has nothing to do with it. 
if the, it, it's an event where certain people go. There's a lot of there's gay people that don't go. But your bottom line is, as a gay man living in a rather conservative uh, southern community, you're opposed to gay marriage. That's your main message, right? Yeah, the main message is, is that uh, not everybody uh, wants gay marriage. Uh, a lot of gay people don't want gay marriage. Um, a lot of people just want to be left alone. If you want right. to... So no, well, your main point was well made right from the beginning. You don't need the government to tell you it's okay to be married, uh, to be gay, basically. Right. Well, that's an interesting point of view. You actually took it from a different point of view, which is that by permitting gay people to be married in the same way as heteros, you're actually creating a restriction upon gay people that they currently don't have. Absolutely. Well, Steve, I, I'm, I'm, I'm again uh, always surprised by the callers I get. And when I ch change gears, as I did today, to a new topic, I get callers I've, ne I've never had before. But I assume that uh, this is not the first time you've listened to this program. I've listened to you a couple of times. I, I don't really listen to a lot of talk radio, but when, uh, when you're on, I, I stick to the dial. Well, I'm, I'm always on. you got to understand that it's just that <laughs> it's when you catch me. But as someone who's always on, I'm sending you a free copy of my new novel, Countdown to Mecca. There's no sexuality in it whatsoever. It's about the threat to all of us from the Islamo-fascists. 855 Here's a quick news break. I don't know if it's bad. Uh, Bill Clinton's plane has engine trouble. Bill Clinton's plane makes unscheduled landing in Tanzania. Plane carrying former President Bill Clinton made an unscheduled landing in Tanzania after a problem with one of the plane's engines was identified. The engine was repaired and the aircraft was on the ground at the D Dodoma fueling station. Clinton was traveling in the East African nation, yeah, to visit projects, in other words, to escape the heat of the book that's coming out. The plane is a Canadian turboprop Dash 7, was traveling from blah, blah, blah to Lake Manyara, which is blah, blah, blah. And of course, he's there to give us the, 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 the you know, agriculture, health, education, yeah. He and his daughter Chelsea are also scheduled to visit. In other words, they, they got out of Dodge while the heat got too hot. They put their daughter up front last week. Do you remember? That was an, an embarrassment. They, they chose Chelsea as a spokesperson. It was like watching a puppet of Hillary. It was almost bizarre. It was frightening. It was as though Hillary has channeled a voice through, Hiller, through um, the daughter, and they, they both got, got both of them out, Chelsea and Bill. When I come back, all the latest breaking news on all the topics, and we'll continue our discussion on the Supreme Court, and your opinion on gay marriage right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, here's a shocker. There is a threat of civil disobedience if the Supreme Court legalizes gay marriage by Christian leaders. They said we will not obey. Huge story. A blunt warning from prominent religious leaders to the Supreme Court that if they cross that line, and I'm quoting now, uh, they're going to engage in civil disobedience. They said, while there are many things we can endure, redefining marriage is so fundamental to the natural order and the common good that this is the line we must draw and one we cannot and will not cross the pledge states. And it was signed by Huckabee, Rick Santorum, Pastor John Hagee, Franklin Graham, uh, uh, et cetera, and many others. The pledge was co-drafted by Deacon Keith Fournier, a Catholic deacon, and Matt Staver, the founder of Liberty Council. There were others involved, and I don't have to read them to you, but here's what they said. We are sending a warning to the Supreme Court and, frankly, any court that crosses the line on this issue of marriage. Once same-sex marriage is elevated to the level of protected status, they say, it will transform the face of society and will result in the beginning of the end of Western civilization. They go on. You are essentially saying that boys and girls don't need moms and dads, that moms and dads are irrelevant. Gender becomes pointless when government adopts same-sex marriage. It creates a genderless relationship out of a very gender-specific relationship. It says that it doesn't matter and that two moms and two dads are absolutely equivalent to a mom and a dad. They, they have a lot more to say. I'll continue this discussion for another full hour on this program because it is a key point in the future of America. Join the Savage Nation. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Okay, well, the word marriage has been uh, one thing to some people, and others want it to mean another. And the Supreme Court is arguing over the legalization of same-sex marriage. The religious right... um, is saying it would destroy our civilization as we know it. And here's their argument. They said the legalization of same-sex marriage could fracture the nation. Quoting now, Dobson goes on to say, the institution of marriage is fundamental and must be defended. It's the foundation for the entire culture. It's been in existence for 5,000 years. If you weaken it or if you undermine it, the entire superstructure can come down. We see it as that important. And that means the possibility that Christians will engage in acts of civil disobedience. He went on to say, I'm talking about civil disobedience, says Mr. Staver. I'm talking about resistance, and I'm talking about peaceful resistance against unjust laws and unjust rulings. And they're saying that people should not recognize the legitimacy of that ruling if it comes down, because it's not grounded in the rule of law. They need to resist that ruling in every way possible, In a peaceful way, they need to resist it as much as Martin Luther King Jr. resisted unjust laws in his time. They claim that there's going to be a constitutional crisis and civil disobedience if the Supreme Court rules adversely from their perspective on same-sex marriage. They say there's no option, no option whatsoever. And they want pastors across the nation to sign the pledge. And he's talking about the outrageous penalties being assigned against people of faith simply because they don't want to participate in a same-sex union. Did you know that an Oregon bakery is facing a $135,000 fine? Christians, they are, for refusing to make a cake for a lesbian wedding. And a Washington State florist faces fines for refusing to participate in a gay wedding. He went on. Dobson says, Christians are being declared the lawbreakers when we are simply living by what we have always believed and by a set of laws that the culture historically has agreed to. Right now, the courts are changing the playing field and declaring that what the natural eye can see and natural law reveals is not truth. What will we do and how will we respond? He said through civil disobedience. Dobson went on to say there's no doubt that LGBT activists are targeting Christian business owners. He's quoted as saying, for about 50 years the homosexual community has had its goal to change the culture, to change the ideology, and if necessary, to force people who don't agree by use of the courts, Dobson said. He went on. He said, I think there's a collision here, and we can all see it, and where it's going to go is anybody's guess, but it is serious. And so they're demanding that there be civil disobedience in the Christian community should the Supremes tilt in favor of gay marriage. And we've been talking about it for two straight hours without let up for good reason. It's been going on, this argument, for a long time. The Supremes are are tilting against it, apparently, according to CNN, if we can believe anything CNN publishes. But by the sound that we have played, and we're not going to play all four of them again, I think I have to go back to this swing voter, because as you well know, the court is, is equally divided, and there's always been a swing vote in the form of Justice Anthony Kennedy. So let's listen to Anthony Kennedy and his opinion thus far in his oral arguments uh, in clip 30. When you think about these cases, you think about words or cases, and and the word that keeps coming back to me in this case is is millennia uh, plus time. This definition has been with us for millennia, and it's very difficult for the court to say, oh, well, we, 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 we know better. Well, that's the swing voter, and because of that, CNN is saying, uh uh-oh, Uh Uh-oh, it looks like we're in trouble. So I think it's time for me to open it up to the callers again because this is a very hot button, big hot button issue. Big, 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 big issue. And most thinking people are tired of looking at the civil unrest in Baltimore. They're sick and tired of the whole uh, situation there. They know what they feel. They know what they see. They know who did it. They know what needs to be done. They know that it's out of control because of uh, the mayor. 
uh, and her policies telling the police to stand down. And the proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding. The minute the National Guard came out with guns, the animals suddenly behaved. I know you don't want to hear the word animal, but I'll use it again anyway. Because that's what it was. Humans don't behave that way. Animals don't even behave that way. As a black caller said yesterday, it's an insult to animals to call them animals. Because an animal doesn't destroy his own property. So that was that. I mean, we don't want to talk about it again. And we're talking about this now. Because this is something people have very strong opinions on. Let's go to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Christy is calling. Let's hear what she has to say on gay marriage. Christy, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. I have a lot of personal feelings about this situation. Um, I am the daughter of a pastor and a woman who decided that she was gay um, and left my father, um, and I was raised in a gay household. Um, wait, wait, you, wait. Your mother became gay or said she declared herself gay. She met, she went with another woman and she took you with her. Okay, following you now. Yes, along with my two siblings. Ryan. And, um, you know, I'm 38 years old, so this was back before being gay was cool. Um, but I was, you know, I grew up in a small town, and from the time that I was five years old, I remember kids coming up to me and, you know, saying trashy things about my mom and saying, oh, your mom's a lesbian and things like that. And I was like, what are you talking about, you know? Um and then there's the Christian background, too. My mother has always been a good Christian woman. She has conservative values. She's, she's always believed there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. Um, but when you look at my mom's history, you know, her father was a philanderer who left when she was three to, you know, run around with other women. Um, my grandmother was remarried to a man who had four sons. My mother had two more brothers. Um, and so your Wait, your grandmother was married... To someone who had four sons. Right. So my mother was raised in a household with six brothers, um, where she was expected to keep up with them. Wait, wait, you mean from different wives? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. I, I didn't follow them. Wow, wild background. Right, right. So, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a crazy story to begin with. Okay, I'm trying to follow it. So that you had a lot of confusion in the in the family to begin with. Mother became gay, left family, took you. You were raised by two gay women. So in your specific case, what's your opinion on gay marriage? I believe that children need a father and a mother. And as wonderful as my upbringing was with my mother and her partner, there's always been a huge chunk missing, and that is, how do you relate with men? What role do men play in your life? Um, what do we need them for? And that has been a theme that has reproduced itself over my lifetime in my marriage. Um, I'm happy to say that I am not divorced. I decided a long time ago I was going to be married once, and if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Um, but I Wait, well, you're saying if it didn't work out, you were going to stay married anyway? Right. Well, I was either going to stay married or I was going to get divorced and never married again. But I was, you know, pretty hardcore that I was going to make it work no matter what I had to do. When, when your mother was with the other woman, did you hear any disparagement towards men? Um, just little, you know, little jokes, but nothing drastic. All right. So it wasn't an ongoing theme that men are horrible, disgusting beasts, nothing like that? No. Mm -hmm. um, but I just always wondered as a kid, what are, what are men for? What do we need them in our lives for? Um, and, you know, as I grew up, I, was, I always wanted male attention, always wanted male attention. Um, I would rather play with the guys than play with the girls. You know, when wait, I was wait, because, you were, because you were missing the father in your home. Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I would have, uh, when I went to middle school, it was wonderful because all of a sudden here's a new demographic of people who don't necessarily know my history and don't know that my mother is gay, and I put up with a lot of flack for that. Um, and then I remember having a sleepover when I was in the seventh grade, and one of the girls said, my mom doesn't want me hanging out with you because if your mom's gay, you're probably gay too. Oh, that hurts. Um, you know, and that destroyed my social life all over again. <laughs> So you have a lot of you have a lot of pain from this. 
I do, but I also, I have a lot of joys, too. I think that my mom was a very good mother. She was very good at teaching us right from wrong. Um, there were no public displays of affection. She wasn't, you know, she never talked about being gay. It was All right, so she didn't make, she didn't do it for a revolutionary purpose. Right. And what, it, wasn't, it wasn't a cause for her. It was just who she was. Exactly, and I think that that's a big difference. Um, yeah, it is a big difference. That's exactly a, that's exactly the, the reason I'm discussing it today, because I, I had a lesbian caller in the last hour. I may I don't know if you heard it. Hour number one, Kate from Louisiana, and although we we, we oppose each other on the issue, we had a very rational discussion. And I don't think people hear any of this kind of thing in this country anymore. No, because I almost I I mean I've seen this um, evolve throughout the years. Um, I work with a lot of young girls now, and I almost feel like um, being being gay these days is a fact. To the Wait, I'm saying person. being gay is a fact? Is that what you just said? No, no it's a fad. It's a fad. Oh, it's almost like, oh being gay is a fad. Right, it's, the right. cool, it's the cool thing to be today. Right, I'm part of a special club, and you can't say anything to me that I don't want to hear because I'm gay and, you know. Um, but switching back and forth between girls and guys and guys and girls, you know, just, just when they feel like it. And I'm not saying that's everybody. That's a generalization, obviously. Um, no, no, it's a, it's a cultural trend. Let's put it that way. It's clearly a cultural trend, and it's being pushed by uh, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg. Exactly. And it, it, TV and movies, that's what they do day and night. Day and night, they're part of the propaganda arm. We know that. And like Steve was saying, it, you know... It would honestly, it would make me uncomfortable if I took my nine-year-old son to visit his grannies, and because we call them both, they're both the grannies, you know. And um, it would make me uncomfortable if we went there, and it and being there was all about them being gay, and they held hands and kissed and. You know, but they don't. Like what so. you're saying is they don't do that. Right. They're just two women living together. Right. It's not about being being out there and having to be heard and having to be seen. Yeah, in other words, it's not San Francisco where everyone's in your face every minute. I get it. Exactly, exactly. As George Orwell wrote, the more I, people, the more I hear people screaming, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, the louder I hear their chains rattling. I think that said it all. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, look, it's a, it's a great caller. I, I, I got to tell you, this show is evolving in a way I never expected, but I want to send you a free copy of my beautiful, beautiful novel, Countdown to Mecca in hardcover, which is coming out just next week after so much hard work. And I know you're going to be frightened reading it. <laughs> That's that simple. Uh, you know, the time is racing by. It's 18 minutes after the hour. We're talking, really, I'll give you breaking news as it comes along. But I want to hear your opinion on gay marriage because the Supreme Court is discussing it as we speak. I'll be right back. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The intimate and committed relationships of same-sex couples, just like those of heterosexual couples, provide mutual support and are the foundation of family life in our society. Yet the legal commitment, responsibility, and protection that is marriage is off limits to gay people as a class. The stain of unworthiness that follows on individuals and families contravenes the basic constitutional commitment to equal dignity. That's the position of uh, the lawyer arguing for gay marriage before the Supreme Court. And I have to go now to Justice Anthony Kennedy again in his reply in clip 30. When you think about these cases, you think about words or cases. And, and the word that keeps coming back to me in this case is, is millennia plus time. This definition has been with us for millennia. And it, it, it's very difficult for the court to say, oh, well, we, 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 we know better. So he's tilting toward the conservative side, and he's the swing voter. Remember that America is still fundamentally a conservative nation. No matter what you may think, this nation is dominantly Christian and dominantly conservative. It's, it doesn't matter what you think. 
It doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter what you'd like it to be. It doesn't matter what you wish the demographics were. It doesn't matter that you wish the Bible would go away. This country is fundamentally Christian and fundamentally conservative. That's number one. And I don't think that the uh, Supreme Court is immune to understanding that. They don't live in a vacuum. They do represent the law for sure, but at the end of the day, they also represent not only the rule of law, but the nation itself. And just as we were all shocked by their ruling on Obamacare, I don't know which way they're going to rule. They could shock us again. Let me take some callers. WDRC Radio, Ted, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm from Bristol, Connecticut, WDRC. Um, I would like to tell you that uh, I'm 57 years old, uh, have been gay all my life. Um, and if you were to ask me uh, if I had a choice, I would say I would definitely want to not be gay. Um, from what I've been through, from what I've seen, I don't like it. I, we live, unfortunately, uh, in a world that is predominantly straight. Um, <laughs> I, I like the way, the way you said unfortunately. <laughs> okay, go on. <laughs> no, no, it's kind of not funny, but it is. I get it. Right. Yeah, things are more accepting if you're. If we lived in the uh, the, the world that was perfect and ideal for everyone in in in, in this world, um, I would definitely want to be straight. But um, from what I've been through, it's a hard. But you're saying from what you've been right. through. Do you mean from the point of view of prejudice you've, you've experienced as a gay man? Yes, sir. Uh, or, or is it as a result of the gay lifestyle itself that you wish you weren't gay? Which is it? Um, probably just because I've been I've been seen with another gay man uh, uh, around the same age um, and have not had any uh, contact. As far as um, to give you an example, uh, well, I want I want to hear your viewpoint. It's very important. You're an older man. In this situation, I want to hear your perspective. It's different than the younger ones. Please stay on the line. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Love, or is it really about sex? Or is, or is it really about politics? After all, what is it really about, this whole gay marriage thing? The gay argument is that it's about equality that they're human beings, and as human beings, they're entitled to equality on all levels. The religious view is the opposite, which is that, of course, you're a human being, and no one's saying you can't be gay, but you can't force us to accept your lifestyle, which we oppose, because it opposes our religious laws, and it opposes society's laws going back millennia. That's the argument, and that's what's being argued by the Supreme Court. And Chief Justice or Justice Anthony Kennedy, who is the swing voter, has said that it's been in a decision. The idea of what it is has been known for millennia. And he said it's very difficult for the court to come back and say, oh, well, we know better. So he's heard the religious side, and that's what he's expressing here. Whether he will express that at the end, nobody really knows. He could just be throwing a sop to the, to the Christian conservatives for fear of a backlash. God knows what's going to happen here. I really don't know. But I want to go back to the call of Ted from WDRC Radio. Ted, welcome to the program. Ted, what city are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from Bristol, Bristol, Connecticut. But you've lived in a, in a, in a liberal area. Why have you, where have you experienced prejudice as a gay man? It's because you're older, right, in an earlier time. Isn't that what you're saying? Um, well, to give you a rough scenario, uh, I was coming out of a shopping plaza one time, and I happened to be with my partner. We were probably about two feet from each other, and an older person, actually older than myself, yelled out a gay slur, and I didn't have re time to respond to that. I just let it go. I didn't want to get into a con confrontation, uh, but it just surprised me. You know, what, you, what do you mean? This was, re this was recent? This was about a year and a half ago. All right, so it's not back in the old ages of pre-Stonewall. That's correct. But, you, but, but your life has changed pre and post Stonewall if you're 57, right? I mean, life was different when you were young for a gay man, wasn't it? 
Yes, it definitely was. I mean, you were picked on regularly, isn't that true? Yes. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, I wasn't picked on that much. Uh, I was teased. I would say teased. I wasn't uh, badgered as far as that goes. All right, but, but things have changed for the better, ha- haven't they, in society or not? Yes, they have. And as far as gay marriage goes, um, I see nothing wrong with it. Only if, um, I think most of the, the gay people that are looking for gay marriage are looking for financial uh, peace of mind for their partner, which tells me that they care for their partner, so they want them to be set straight, you know, set financially. Well, I agree. There's a, it's a big financial issue here. There's, let's not f- uh, fool ourselves. Yes. It is a big it it is a big issue. Well, look, I, I don't know if you're a regular listener or you just happen to be scanning the dial and heard the, of the topic and tuned in. I really don't know which which one is it. Uh definitely a regular listener, um, a great admirer. Here, I have. Right, well, to say. so you're a gay man who's not a, a bigot like most gays in San Francisco are. Oh no 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 no! They hate no. me because they've typecast me. They don't even know who I am. Oh, to, wow. because because I oppose gay marriage. Suddenly, I'm Hitler to them. Oh, wow. Dr. Savage, I have to tell you one thing. Um, 1957, I was born, and I was adopted. And I was adopted by a straight couple. Uh, my parents, who were her, adopted me, were the best parents I could have ever, ever had. And do you know, um, they accepted me. The only thing they cared about, as long as I cared about people and did the right thing in life, that's all they cared about. No, what parent who's sane wouldn't have that attitude? I mean, you know, if a parent has a gay child, how could you look at it any other way? What are you going to do, beat him up? That's true. I mean, you know, I mean, you're lucky that they were that enlightened at that time because there were some who, uh, you know, saw it a whole different way, and they ridiculed the child. They made their life a living hell. Uh, as some threw them out of the houses. I know it was awful in those days. but So these are issues that affect all of us. They're going to affect society. I don't know which way the ruling is going to come down. From my point of view, I oppose gay marriage, but truthfully, I don't think it'll change my life one way or the other. I mean, at the end of the day, is my life going to be changed if they approve gay marriage? I oppose it for the reasons I mentioned, but at the end of the day, my life isn't going to, is, is not going to change one iota. I'm still going to get up in the morning with slight pains in my right hand, with a stiff right leg. I'm still going to do the things I do every day. I'm still going to worry about my own fate, my own morality, my own mortality. I don't see how this is going to affect me one way or the other, to be honest with you. Right, right. I, I mean, really, what, what does it matter to me? What do I care at the end of the day? That's true. That's true. I mean, I pose it for the reasons I mentioned, which is I think it's confusing to children. But I'm not a child. Right. Yeah, so, so it's two things here. Look, it's a product of my having grown up in a big city called New York City. And I would say in the formative years of the 1950s, you'd think I grew up in a Neanderthal time, but my father was an antique dealer. And as an antique dealer, believe me, I was exposed to a wide variety of humanity, including quite a few gay decorators who came into the into the store, incidentally. And never once did he ridicule them, by the way. Even though he was an immigrant, even though he came from another world, I never heard him go home and laugh at them or make a joke about them. They were good customers, and generally they were far more civilized than most of the other people that we met. Right. And maybe that's because they did the job that they were supposed to do. And they did. I don't know. They didn't bother anybody. They were better dressed. They had nicer haircuts, and they spent more money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember there was a couple that were, they had a store over on in the West Village on Sullivan Street, you know, in a better neighborhood than, than my father's store. And we used to call them. I did. I called them. Or the guys called them nice and nasty. One of them was a very you know masculine guy and he was the nice one and then the feminine one he was the nastiest sob whatever you said to him he would put you down he snapped at you no matter what you said and and it was amazing how they behaved so predictably well as the years went on and i grew up and left and my father passed away i came back to new york and lo and behold i was walking through the west village and i stumbled into an antique store and there they were with gray hair they didn't recognize me and i asked them the price of something and sure enough, the nice one gave me the price. The other one was nasty and almost threw me out of the store for no reason. So I said they never changed one iota in 20 years. Now, that's not neither, neither here nor there, but I'm telling you that my background is a little more diverse than those who are quick 
to categorize individuals or stereotype them. You say, here's something interesting. You say you've been subject to prejudice as a gay man, right, with gay slurs. Can yep. you imagine what it's like being Michael Savage, being a conservative, an outspoken one at that in San Francisco for all these years, what I have to put up with? Exactly. Can you imagine the life of rejection that I live? Can you imagine the hatred that I experience from the bigots here in this city who call themselves liberal, gay or straight? Yes, I understand. Do you realize what I've suffered as a result of being an outspoken conservative who loves America in this city? I've sacrificed an awful lot for my beliefs, so trust me, I can identify uh, with your position in that regard. If only they would truly listen to you. Cause you're well, they don't listen to me. If only they'd listen to me, they'd know that I'm not who they say I am, but that, that's asking too much of Nancy Pelosi and her acolytes. Listen, my friend, a pleasure. I'm sending you a copy of my beautiful hardcover book, Countdown to Mecca, that you will love. The cover is <laughs> gorgeous. Talking about design, I mean, this cover is unbelievable. It looks like a chrome steel mount looking at me. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca, another book that goes on the bookshelf. This show is flying by. It's one of those days where if we were talking about uh, uh, a, you know, if I was talking about Baltimore or I was just doing liberals this, conservative, I would have a heart attack by now. I'd be, I'd be like apoplectic. I wouldn't feel good. My neck would be swollen. I'd be coughing. I'd be. Why is it that when I have a discussion that's on a slight, ele slightly elevated level and I really express my opinion without worrying so much about what people think, why is it the show is better and I feel better? I'll let you figure out why, because freedom is everything. Freedom, the freedom of expression is everything in the world. And that's something that we have to cherish and fight for in this country. Really, I mean, you know, I don't want to get too preachy, but really that's the essence of America. You know, I'm running this the scholarship contest where I'm giving away the $100,000 to 10 lucky kids. And some of the essays are awesome. But at the end of the day, you know what it comes down to? It's what is America? I, I, def I said define America. I don't think there's anything that more clearly defines America than freedom of expression. And as, a, as an outspoken conservative, me, Michael, I've got to tell you how much hatred I have experienced in my life from people who are called liberals and how illiberal they really are, how fascistic they really are, how intolerant they really are. You haven't any idea what it's like to have achieved what I have achieved through extremely hard work and be castigated as an outcast in a city because I don't conform to their belief system. You know what it's like to have earned a PhD from the University of California at Berkeley and have never been invited back to that university to give one speech while they invite street bums and rats and radicals to give valedictoria, this speech, that speech, low-life politicians, you think that doesn't bother me? Do you know what it's like to live in a city and having written 29 books and have the newspaper not cover any of the books? Do you know what it's like to be treated worse than a black was treated in the South in the 1950s by liberals in San Francisco? Well, I'll tell you someday what it's all about, but I'm not here to complain. And so when you say you're talking about gays and experience of uh, uh, prejudice, let me tell you something. They're not alone in experiencing prejudice from the greatest society. Try being a conservative in a so-called liberal city. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, I can do an entire show about this show, and I, I think I might do that tomorrow. Because the callers that I've received thus far, for those of you who've been listening, there's a discussion for three hours now on gay marriage. The type of caller I've been getting is very different than the normal caller to talk radio in general and different than the normal caller I get on the Savage Nation. There's a certain civility, a certain sensibility to it that I don't normally get that makes talk radio much better for me this way. And I wish to God that every day we could do a show like this. How can I do it every day? You think I'm going to do this tomorrow, another show on gay marriage? I probably won't. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a show on suicide tomorrow. That was... <laughs> I almost did a show on suicide today because I'm reading about suicide and I was going to talk about it, euthanasia, suicide. And then all of a sudden the sound on this came up 
I said, wait a minute, this is a, I never, I never do the gay stories, by the way, because I've been, I mean, I avoid it, to be very honest with you, because I've been uh, castigated by certain individuals in the community. I figured who needs it, you know what I mean? But this is a topic now that's mainstream, it's in the Supreme Court. Nobody can accuse me of bigotry just because I oppose gay marriage. It's impossible, unless they themselves are the bigots. So I figured I would take a chance with it, but oh, I don't know what tomorrow is going to be about. Let's go to a few more callers on the show. I could go another three hours on it. WBAP in Dallas. WBAP in Dallas. Mark, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, my call today was uh, about, uh, it seems that all through the program, everyone pretty much agrees that it's a redefinition of marriage, whichever side they're on. Uh. And I was wondering, uh, should we not ask the question, when and by whom was marriage defined, uh, and why do we even need it anymore? It's an interesting question, and given the uh, the number of births of people who are not married, I would say a lot of people have either come to the same conclusion or the forces of society have driven that conclusion. But, I, you, know, the, w you know, let's go back in time. When did marriage originate and why? Well, you could say it was to promote the proliferation of the species. Wouldn't you say that that would be one argument? That, that is one purpose, I believe. Uh, another purpose would be to make certain that property rights are transferred properly from the progenitors of that child to the child so that it's not seized by others. In other words, inheritance rights would be another reason for marriage, right? As it evolved, I would agree. So those are the, the beginnings of it. And also to keep people in line. I mean, the thing is, if you look at the Old Testament, God, I can go on now for 30 minutes. If you look at the restrictions in Deuteronomy, where there's such strong restrictions against homosexuality, including stoning people to death for this, which is why the radical Muslims are so dangerous, because they picked this up out of whole cloth and have never evolved beyond uh, you know, 5,000 years ago. What was the par the purpose of ancient tribal an ancient tribal people called the Jews imposing such strict crazed rules on a, on on the, on the tribesmen? Be obviously, people were doing it. Think about it. In other words, if the rabbis said God said a man shall not lie with a man like with a woman, why would why would they have to say it if men were not lying with men like with a woman? So men were lying with men like with women, right? Exactly. All right. So the the ancient rabbis. If they said God said it or they wrote it, who knows what. Some believe it was God's word. Some believe it was just the wise men of the time. They did it in order to make sure that the men didn't lie with men, that they lied with a woman to make babies so that the people wouldn't die out. That would be a very elemental way of looking at what, uh, what uh, why that law was written. Would, would that be correct? I would agree with that. And it, it also shows that this is nothing new. This is not <laughs> no. new. No. What? Not being gay is nothing new. No, it's nothing new. No, it's nothing new. Now, in Greek society, homosexuality was quite normal. Do you know that in ancient Roman society it was also not prohibited in, that, in the way that we think it was? We think of Roman gladiators and such as macho and this and that. They just as soon slept with men as with women. Did you know that? I do. <laughs> yeah, so believe me, I know a lot more about history than I have a chance to express. And so now here we are revisiting a very, very, very uh, historically interesting topic. And we're looking at it almost from a puritanical point of view in America, as though it's a brand new subject, when it's not brand new at all. It's been around a long time, right? Yes. All right. So you raise the question of why do we even need marriage? And I don't know. See, I don't sense that I know exactly what you're asking. So why don't you conclude by telling us what you mean? It is the ultimate question of, of uh, who came up with the idea of marriage and the purpose for it. Well, I think I've given you my anthropolo I've given you my anthro religious points of view, <laughs> and I would say that they're only my own. I've not read them anywhere, but I want to thank you for listening. I'm sending you a free copy of my novel, which will be out next week. Countdown to Mecca. Well, it's countdown to the end of the show today. I'm sorry it has to come to an end, and I know many of you are as well. And with God's will and your listenership, I, Michael Savage, shall be back tomorrow on the same station. Be here or be nowhere.